Um, all right, so I'm going to admit, I've never met Diana in person. I've only seen uh, the picture she has on her Twitter account and in chat. So I have been dying for this moment to see if the hair matches the picture. Um, it does. <laughs> and it's amazing. Um, Paul Morey, who talked during the keynote, is known for having a mohawk that is colored any kind of gradient from green to yellow or purple to pink or something like that. And today he had a hat on and I was legitimately disappointed. So I'm looking forward to this. There's going to be a point during your talk where I pull my daughter in to show her because she's going to think that's amazing. Um, and none of this is related to Python. Um, so with that introduction, uh, I'm going to let Diana take over and she's here to talk about Flask. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. And yeah, this is this is a good old Mohawk. Um, so um, yeah, the title of my talk today is how much um, of a micro framework and it's exciting. You can check the slides on slides.com forward slash super Diana forward slash flask micro. And I'd like to introduce myself. Um, so you know who am I? My name is Diana Rodriguez. I'm a Python developer advocate at Vonage. Uh, I'm also all those things you see in there. But the most important part is that I'm someone who learns new things every single day. By the way, I love the community. I love to get in touch with people. Um, so feel free to um, follow me or DM me on Twitter. And that's my website, superguide.dev. And um, yeah, this is exciting. And now that we know who am I, I'd like to also remind everyone about who am I not. And I don't know if you know this lady, but this is the Oracle, particularly from the Matrix. So I'm not the Oracle, and this means I don't know all the answers. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> despite of you know being in this industry for 20 years, there's so much that uh, can be learned every day. Apart from all this introduction, I would also love to warn you that this talk is framework agnostic and that I promote the weapon of choice philosophy, which means whatever tool you use is the best as long as it does the job. I'm not trying to mob anyone <laughs> into the cult of you know the, the 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 gospel of flask or or promote any framework wars or anything and i will be using obvious examples and i've learned throughout um my entire career that simplicity goes a long way so this is this is um a talk for all audiences beginner and advanced and i think these are things that we should all think about and remember right um so to give you some context i'm going to be comparing the two well i would say the, one of the two most the most popular frameworks um you know in the python um scene there's flask the one i'm going to talk about and django uh, and Django is one of the most popular and common frameworks used in Python, and it's a full-fledged suite in comparison to Flask. So I need I need a comparison um, point. And well, for those who are not familiar with Django, um, it's a Python-based free and open-source framework. It follows the model template view architectural pattern, and it's amazing. So when we want to create complex database driven websites, it is used widely around the world and it's 100% awesome. And then there's Flask. It's a Python micro framework. And well, I, I like to question the use of micro framework, um, but we'll talk about it in a bit. So it's uh, based in Wergzerk. I can never pronounce that properly, you know. Ginger 2 for templating and the bestest intentions. And I say that because um, those who created Flask actually had the best intentions in heart. Um, and I like Flask because we can build um, 
amazing applications. We can build very simple APIs and the simplicity again is what totally drove me to Flask. Now, if we think of micro framework, I like the Avengers and I like to compare Flask or, or the concept of Flask as a micro framework. Oh my glasses are cloudy to Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is my most favorite um, Avenger. So I'd like to compare it to Doctor Strange, but if we actually get to the real business, this is the sample architecture of a micro framework. So we have the very basics to make it happen. Um, if you're more into visual comparisons, um, a micro framework could be seen as Lego blocks. You can add or take at will according to your needs. Now, if we compare this to the Django architecture, and I'm not going to go in depth to what you see. This is, this is what the architecture looks like. We could compare that to the All Blacks <laughs> from New Zealand. It's, it's a, a full team with um, amazing players and you know there we, we make the choice based on what we want to build. Do we want to have the whole team? Do we need a whole team carrying out all these team tasks or we do just need the ball, right? Um, that's basically um, my, my bestest comparison. If we see um, how simple Flask is and why I, I think it's amazing because it's super, it's super friendly, it's beginner friendly. Um, one of the, the, the things that I like the most is that you can have a Hello World app in less than 10 lines and no complication. It is extremely readable. Um, the syntax is beautiful and if we, if we think about people who are learning from scratch, um, it's pretty friendly to understand what's going on. So we're basically instantiating Flask and then we have our route decorators where we can define the route and method. If it applies, then we write our logic and then we run our app in main. And that's basically how we get to this. And I left it with PyLadies because I, I, I gave a similar talk um, to PyLadies and yeah, it looks awesome. So for those who write APIs without frameworks, um, Flask also offer, offers um, simplicity and performance. This is basically what you need to get started. Now let's see, every framework and every tool we use has its pros and cons. And we're going to talk about that. So for the pros, the learning curve is not steep at all. I consider Flask um, a good framework to start with Python. And if you're not into Python and you're getting into this side of the world is also a good way to start. It's production ready, which means you can test your apps. You can basically deploy your, your apps um, and check them locally as well, run them locally. Um, the writing syntax is amazing. It helps me personally organize my code in, in a better way. Um, it also supports sessions and cookies. It is extensible because you can add or take at will. And something that could be seen often as a disadvantage, but to my own point of view is an advantage. It doesn't come with any baked in or um, or admin interface, which means, you know, it's lightweight. And, and again, we're, we're going back to whether we need the whole team for a small app or we just need the ball or one player, right? And of course, the documentation is excellent. Now, if we think about cons, well, Flask has none. No, <laughs> I'm joking. It can be seen a bit complex for big apps. Um, maybe, you know, 
too many moving parts can consume a lot of development time. And this is when we say, well, we have to choose wisely what we do. Um, the community is very small in comparison to Django, but, you know, yeah, don't let that discourage you because this is the opportunity to create something new. If there's nothing, if there's no answer to your question, well, it's a good time to, to think of solutions and propose them and the, the community will benefit from it. So in general, performance and freedom of choice, many libraries and modules, and the freedom to create new solutions for the community in general. So after this, the most common questions I get are, is Flask for small projects only? Mm, I don't think so. Um, in the world of Flask, there are a lot of dependencies that will help us create uh, robust and scalable web projects. So do you want to connect to a database? Um, you can implement the ORM of your choice. Do you want to version your API? There's sure a library to meet those needs. Uh, do you want to integrate migrations and an, interact an interactive shell uh, for your models? You can do that. I personally recommend Flask Manager. And the community is actually very active in this, in this particular aspect. So there are many things that are native to Django that you can find them as, as Flask dependencies. And again, if not, what a grand opportunity to create something new. Um, another, another common question is, why is it called a micro framework? Well, <laughs> let's not get carried away when we see micro framework. The only reason why Flask is called a micro framework is because it comes with the bare minimum so you can start creating on top of it. Um, like I said, sometimes our needs are very particular and we don't need a full-fledged suite with, with an admin interface, with um, a baked in ORM and all these um, utilities or, or, or extra features that could seem unnecessary for, for certain kinds of, of apps. So having the freedom to add or take at will actually makes it grand. That's why it's a micro framework. Sorry, I get carried away. I start talking about it and I get excited. Um, another common question is, can you do everything Django does? Everything you do with Django, you can do it with Flask. So you can define routes, you can work with forms, you can render templates, um, send emails, define unit tests, and everything else and whatever doesn't exist um you can create it um when should i use flask instead of django i'd say um so flask is a very light frame uh, framework if you're working with microservices um and if you're working with iot related projects Flask, you can actually run a Flask server in a Raspberry Pi and uh, a Pi Zero as well. Um, so yeah, there you go. If we move on, let's go to the next stage. So full stack Flask, this is interesting, but yeah, it is possible too. Um, we can use Flask with um, all popular uh, front-end frameworks. I've I've had the pleasure to work with all of them actually. So I've had I've, I have applications with React and Flask, Flask and Angular. Can you believe it? <laughs> Flask and Vue, and I will leave you a link in the resources um, slide. Flask and Spell, and you know what? It works like a charm. But. It's, it's been a grand sales pitch so far. Let's see Flask in action. And I'll give you some context. You have, um, there you have a, a URL um, for an application that um, I built for myself. I'll tell you a bit more about it. It basically uses Jinja for templating and I'm using materialized CSS. <clears throat> and to give you some context, I am diabetic. So I belong to the 40 Pancreas Club. 
if you go to that URL, dianux.superdie.dev, you'll see something like this. And that is a dashboard that has data from a sensor that I have here in my arm that is constantly measuring my glucose levels. This dashboard is a web-based CGM or continuous glucose monitor. It's called Night Scout and it shows glucose data in real time. Um, values are predicted 30 minutes ahead using another regressive second order model. Um, the server reads from a Mongo database containing data from the sensor. And then I have the possibility of generating alarms for high and low values. And that's grand. Um, what happens? So I have a sensor and then it, it goes to my phone and it also goes to this dashboard. And based on that data, I can make better dosing um, decisions. And I have a, I have a pump, a wireless pump, I know, I'm, um, ah, Omnipod. <laughs> That's what you see in there. The problem is that although, yeah, my phone and, and whatever devices, they have alarms, but in moments of crisis, it is very difficult for me to hear them. When I'm asleep, when I'm working, you know, the world can end. And the only thing that I can actually hear that will wake me up or if I'm not feeling well is when my phone rings. So the idea was to make my life and the lives of those fellow diabetics who have my same struggles much easier. Taking advantage of the simplicity of Flask and I'm adding um, the use of Vonage APIs. But how? Well, uh, we have a range of values. These are the low and high values for myself, but they're pretty standard. Uh, for Europe, uh, values are uh, measured in millimoles per liter. In the Americas, uh, it's milligrams per deciliter. So this app can handle both. You can configure that. And then we have the elements of my mobile phone. I can always hear it. So using two communication APIs from Vonage, I can make this happen. I'm going to use the SMS and voice APIs to notify myself and my emergency contacts of the irregular situations with my blood sugar levels, which means at first, if, if there's anything going, going on with those blood sugar levels, it's going to call me and it's going to tell me, Diana, you're high. Your blood sugar level is, I don't know, 140. Let's see live. How are we? We are at 107, which is very good. So if I don't pick up, it will call my mom, which is the next um, emergency contact. And if my mom doesn't pick up, I can add up to five emergency contacts and they will get the call if either of them don't pick up. And if no one picks up, they will all get notified by text message. If my dashboard is, is offline, they will also get a message saying, hey, Diana's Night Scout is offline. And then someone will contact me. And this is particularly useful because if I became unresponsive in the middle of the night and someone gets a call, they normally know that I'm at home. And if I need assistance, someone can call 911. So what this does is it grabs readings for the last 60 minutes or any given time frequency through a Python thread with a scheduler. If ranges are below or higher than what is configured through environment variables, it fires an alerts. There's also an alert, like I said, if there are no readings, like if it's offline. And then a second scheduler can be used to obtain fresh data. And this is it. It's a simple Flask app that allows me to log in and configure my details. And in this case, the easiest way to, to access was using Google authentication with Firebase. And I know the design is pretty simple. Um, I was in a bit of a rush, but here you can see that I'm configuring the endpoint um, for the entries to grab the blood glucose readings data. I can configure my phone number to receive the calls, then an emergency contact. This is my mom in this case, and up to five additional contacts. 
Let's have a very quick run through all the technical details that make developing this app an enjoyable experience. And uh, also, if you think of any features that could be added to improve this app, please reach out. Um, there's going to be a grand, um, a grand thing, a grand repo for Hacktoberfest um, because adding features is not as difficult. It's not complicated enough. Make sure I've documented the APIs pretty well and offer documentation also on the development process. So I, I even um, have a tutorial that I will share with you on how I develop this app. So let's go through um, these details. Very simple. For our views, we use Jinja as a template engine. HT, um, it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and here we have a pound template defining um, content blocks to be used by children templates. And these block, these blocks, sorry, <laughs> will display the code from those templates. Um, something else to note is the URL for function to point to JavaScript and C CSS in our static folder, which is a very comfortable and elegant way to do so. And then here we have that login screen that we see. Obviously, I didn't add the whole thing, but just to show you um, a little bit what it looks like. So here we can see, we can see how login inherits from that main layout template. And then the renderer will load um, layout with whatever, whatever variations we add to our login file. And these variants will be defined within the blocks we send layout. For example, I'm using the head block. And then, boom, I added my, my code. On the Python side of things, again, one of the things that I love the most about this, about Flask, is that you can specify the right and the method if applicable, and then write your logic. So when you're seeing your code, you can actually read through in a friendly and organized way. And at the end of the day, we don't want to write cryptic code. Um, I think that the best way or the best thing we have to offer to the community, to users, to, to anyone who wants to work in our projects is clean and readable code. And, and with Flask, we have that, you know, that um, opportunity out of the box. But if you want to know more about how I built this app in depth, because it's actually a two part tutorial, instead of going um, to that super long URL, <laughs> you can go to nextmo.dev forward slash night scout. That's nextmo.dev forward slash night scout. Uh, it's the same. I will leave the links anyway. Um, and obviously, if you want to contribute to that repository for Hacktoberfest, I encourage you to do so. Um, I think that um, as the face of the Python SDK at Vonage, um, I think we're going to be we're we're going to be giving some incentives. Also, if you like some credits to start testing the APIs and 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 check them out. Um, please reach out. I am, you know, more than glad to, to give you all the tools that you need to explore these APIs and to also um, contribute with this project that is benefiting uh, diabetic patients. So we're, we're in the tech for good challenge. Another thing I'd like to show you, um, and, and this is work in progress. If you want to see how things are going, obviously this is work in progress and it's been a while since the last time I, I updated it, but it's it's um, a karaoke uh, room. It's basically, yeah, uh, an online karaoke. You can basically call a list and choose from a list and whoever you invite will get to sing. And, and I'm in the process of organizing how people are going to display. Um, so if you want to check that repo out as well, it's a good way to show how Flask and React and a video API can interact. So I'm super excited. Um, in conclusion, so Flask is definitely an awesome option if you're starting your journey with Python and it's not, it is a great option as well. Um, like I said, 
the learning curve is not steep at all. Um, I like it because it's it's pretty readable, and you know the community is actually very friendly. I have to say about this uh, about the uh, Python community overall. Um, I've had the most amazing experience. It's been twenty years for me developing, and and since day one, things have been amazing. <laughs> Um, again, Flask is definitely not limited to small projects only. It just depends, again, on your choice of how much time are you going to develop, are you going to be um, using to develop your applications, whether you, you'd need a solution that comes with everything baked in, or if you want to have that granularity to control how you do things, it's up to you. I just personally like the freedom of choice, if we can call it that way. Um, of course, you can add or take at will to meet your needs. So again, if you need something very minimal, say you're, you're writing um, an API, um, it, it, it works grand because it's just what you need, right? Um, something else. Once you gain proficiency with Flask, moving to Django will be very easy, or maybe you won't need to move at all. <laughs> um, so if we think of Flask as a micro framework, remember what I said at the beginning? I think more um, in terms of a mighty framework, and this is why I relate it to Doctor Strange so much. If you'd like um, some resources, um, I'm adding a tutorial. It wasn't written by me. It's by Alex Cabrera, and it's a grand tutorial on writing um, apps with Svelte and Flask. I loved it. Um, there are also um, some resources with you and Flask a repository with everything Flask and, <laughs> and then some tutorials and that URL is actually pasted twice. I guess I got really excited while I was doing this and well, the, the slides URL. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. I really loved speaking to you all. And I, and again, if you want to reach out, you can go to superdie.dev or you can, um, message me on Twitter. And here's the resources slide again. And um, like Looney Tunes says, that's all folks. <laughs> Not quite all yet. I do have a question I want you to ask, um, or want you to answer, I should say. And I'm glad you, you stopped on this slide. You can tell you've definitely um, done these kind of talks before. Uh, I, I saw your, your schedule on your website and it's kind of bonkers how many Talk to you these days. Um, I said earlier, like the fall season is, is kind of crazy. Um, so, Burr's asking, do Flask folks often use ORM or is it just straight SQL? I know personally, I've been using SQL Alchemy. Um, it's, it's the best choice, definitely. Okay. I would say I recommend SQL Alchemy above everything. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I come from um, the OpenShift world where I'm typically demoing something where you don't necessarily have a clean startup of my database is up and completely running and then my application comes up. I've done demos where it's my application's up and running in this degraded mode and then the database may pop up and get discovered. And I found that SQL Alchemy handles that kind of the smoothest. And it's it's arguable if that's either anywhere from bad design to cloud native design, where you've got this kind of wonkiness going on. But in any event, um, thank you. Uh, that was, I've done demos. Uh, I've seen Hello World demos, uh, you know, incountable at this point. Um, and seeing this very specific, very personal project was a really cool, um, addition to this. I think it, uh, everyone could wrap their head around it. Uh, I don't know if you've been keeping an eye on chat. I've, I've asked the questions, but definitely scroll through because you've got quite a number of compliments on your slides. Um, I can personally vouch for that as well. I dig Matrix and MCU and all of this nerdy stuff. You fit in extremely well with the kind <laughs> of nerd that I am. Um, 
So that was really cool. You got a lot of good feedback on that. Uh, thank you again. I'll ask before you. you completely disconnect, if you can just post, um, I posted your Night Scout link. Um, I was trying to type in ones as they went and um, I ended up getting distracted as I was watching the talk and I'm like, oh shit, I should be typing. Um, so if you could just fill in a couple of links so people can click on them, I'd appreciate it. Definitely, definitely I'll do. And um, again, <laughs> sorry to take this, this minute, um, Think of Hacktoberfest. If you want to contribute to this, to this repository, I will post the links. I'd be more than glad to give you everything you need to get started, and that including um, credits for the Monarch APIs. It was an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you for that. Also, you know, very open source. -y. This is the kind of thing we want to push. So again, thank you super. Uh, thank you so much for this. This is really cool. I really appreciate it. Um, we are.